Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Netherlands attacks creeping EU powers Establishment of Eurodac for the comparison of fingerprints Negotiators strike deal on controversial staff reform Port state control aligning two directives to the maritime labour convention requirements Plus, EU sends Italy back to the court over Naples' trash e epidemic I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The Netherlands, one of the Union's six founding countries, has attacked creeping EU interference in people's day-to-day -day lives. Its coalition government said in a memo published on Friday, the Netherlands is convinced that the time of an ever closer union in every possible policy area is behind us. It said the union's slogan should be European where necessary, national where possible. It underlined that it does not want to change EU treaties. It also said there is a strong need for joint EU action on big ticket items such as economic governance, migration and defence. The objective of the proposed regulations is to enable Member States, Law Enforcement Authorities and Europol to access the EuroDAC Central Database for the purposes of prevention, detection and investigation of terrorist offences and other serious criminal offences. EuroDAC is a database storing fingerprints of asylum seekers. The report recommends that the European Parliament's position should be to amend the Commission's proposal. Negotiators from the European Parliament, the Commission and the Council of Ministers have struck a tentative agreement on a reform of the Union's staff regulations, which set out the pay, pensions and perks of European Union officials. While the deal has not been made public, it is thought to include a rise in the pension age to 65 years for current staff, up from 63, and to 66 years for new staff, an increase without compensation of the weekly working hours from 37.5 to 40, and the reintroduction in January of a 6% special levy on parts of officials' salaries. Travel allowances will be reduced, but other allowances will not be cut. Salaries will be frozen for 2013 and 2014. The European Parliament supports legislation establishing minimum standards for working and living conditions on board ships, and given the global nature of the shipping industry, the rapporteur, Brian Simpson, thinks that it is appropriate that such standards are applied to the entire industry. Thus, the measures required to ensure compliance, which are contained in the Title V, are extremely important as the rapporteur considers that substandard ships are unacceptable in view of workers' rights, ship safety, security and environmental protection. Current ship owners, masters and flag states are responsible for ensuring that ships comply with the relevant rules. However, not all flag states enforce such provisions effectively, which is why it is appropriate that the EU provides mechanisms to verify that the relevant standards are applied on board all ships, calling it EU ports, regardless of the nationality of the seafarers or the ship's flag. The MLC's No More Favourable Treatment Clause will ensure that ships that fly the flag of a state that has not ratified the convention should no longer not receive more favourable treatment than those ships flying the flag of a state that has ratified it, thus ensuring a more level playing field for shipping. The European Commission is referring Italy back to court for failing to deal once and for all with waste handling problems that have left Naples and its wider region blighted by piles of stinking rubbish. More than 6 million tonnes of garbage are heaped at various sites across the Campania region that includes Naples, which is Italy's third largest city but produces more rubbish than the capital Rome. Poor trash handling has been a problem there for years, stemming from disputes between local authorities and organised crime groups that make money by collecting rubbish then dumping it illegally instead of processing it. Today in our video library, it's always good to keep an overview of the European Union on file. This short video gives a clear introduction to the EU, which countries are involved, what are the complexities of the EU, structures, etc. It's recommended viewing as a general introduction to the European Union. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. 
I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>